welcome doctors to another podcast on cghs clinic syncope is a very tricky symptom to handle in wellness center to tell us about how to approach syncope we have with us a very popular doctor and an experienced clinician who also handles administrative side in wellness center dr k r hema from adiyar wellness center chennai she is going to tell us about how we should approach a patient of syncope coming to wellness center welcome dr hema uh, for this lecture i am sure after listening to this lecture our doctors will feel very confident in how to approach a patient of syncope in wellness center welcome good evening friends and thank you dr dadke for your kind and generous introduction today we will be talking about a clinical approach to a patient with syncope by definition syncope is a transient abrupt loss of consciousness with complete return to pre existing neurological function occurring due to acute global impairment of cerebral blood flow the causes of syncope are 58% neurally mediated which is vasovagal or situational 23% cardiac causes due to arrhythmias or structural cardiac disease 18% of syncope are unexplained and 1% is due to neurologic or psychiatric reasons in diagnosing a case of syncopal attack history is the key in a history what happened exactly should be noted one in the patient's own words and two in the words of the witness especially note what the patient was doing just before the attack was he standing for a prolonged period was he sitting down or was he running or having an exertion or activity was he coughing micturating defecating laughing or swallowing or was he did he stand up suddenly from a seated posture or did he stand after exertion was he bending forwards as in shaving or was there any hand or upper extremity exercise some leading questions have to be asked to the patient did he have any prodromal symptoms like sweating palpitation feeling of warmth or heat was he on any medication did he have any weakness of body part or confusion on recovery did he have any injury to his tongue next ask for family history of sudden death congenital arrhythmogenic heart disease or fainting and past history of cardiac disease check for scars pulses murmurs pacemakers and other devices does he have a neurological history like in parkinsonism epilepsy or narcolepsy does he have diabetes is he on any medications especially antihypertensives antianginal antidepressant agent antiarrhythmics diuretics and qt prolonging agents and in case of recurrent syncope detailed information on recurrences should be asked now once you suspect a case of syncope and your diagnosis is almost made think of other disorders which can mimic syncope there are disorders with impairment or loss of consciousness like hypoglycemia it is not a true syncope as not spontaneously reversible hypoxia hyperventilation with hypocapnia next epilepsy third intoxications and fourth vertebro basilar transient ischemic attack there are other disorders resembling syncope without loss of consciousness like cataplexy drop attacks psychogenic syncope or somatization disorders and transient ischemic attacks of carotid origin some seizures can mimic syncope and vice versa how do you differentiate a syncopal attack from that of a seizure in a syncopal attack there is spontaneous rapid and complete recovery and myoclonic and other movements may be seen in up to 90% of syncopal episodes but they last for only about 30 seconds whereas in a seizure the loss of consciousness lasts for longer than 5 minutes in a syncopal attack there is no post ictal phase reorientation occurs almost immediately after a syncopal event whereas there is a prolonged post ictal drowsiness and disorientation in a seizure 
syncope is provoked by emotions or pain whereas seizures are rarely triggered by pain or stress there is no fecal incontinence in syncope whereas seizure can have urinary and fecal incontinence and gen and usually tongue bite there are some clues which lead us to diagnose the type of syncope syncope related to posture like a standing posture provoking factors like pain and prodromal syndrome is likely to be a vasovagal type of syncope syncope related to sudden standing from a seated posture diuretic usage and diabetics may be orthostatic type of syncope syncope related to cough micturition or defecation is situational syncope and syncope related to neck movement bending of neck may be carotid sinus syndrome syncope related to exertion is most likely a cardiac syncope as in high risk aortic stenosis hokum ventricular arrhythmia and qt prolongation once the history leads us to a provisional diagnosis of syncope a physical examination should be done especially focusing on the vital signs the cardiovascular system and the neurologic vascular and gi systems the vital signs blood pressure and heart rate should be recorded in supine position and after 3 minutes of standing the cardiovascular system should be examined for murmurs and arrhythmias the neurological examination should rule out muscle weakness paresthesia or cranial nerve abnormalities carotid bruit should be looked for in the vascular system and any blood loss should be ruled out by examining the gi tract investigations in a case of syncope is used less for diagnosing syncope but more for ruling out more serious causes of syncopal attacks and also to rule out seizures ecg is a must for all cases of syncope and especially when there is suspicion of arrhythmias an ecg can reveal bradi or tachyarrhythmias av block old mi or long qt syndrome lab tests is done to rule out myocardial infarction anemia secondary autonomic failure or electrolyte imbalance imaging studies echocardiogram to rule out structural cardiac abnormality electrophysiological studies done in patients with coronary artery disease cardiomyopathy or brugada syndrome exercise testing history of syncope during exercise tilt table testing to diagnose autonomic failure or a predisposition to neurally mediated syncope carotid sinus massage done in patients more than 50 years with recurrent syncope of unknown etiology and eeg when there is a suspicion of seizure investigations excluding ecg should be done as per clinical suspicion when should a patient with syncope be admitted when there is clinical history suggestive of arrhythmia syncope syncope during exercise history of palpitation or syncope in supine posture comorbid conditions like severe anemia or electrolyte imbalance when there is ecg evidence of arrhythmia syncope for example bifascicular block sinus bradycardia less than 40 per minute in absence of sa block or medications pre excited qrs complex abnormal qt interval st elevation leads v1 through v3 brugada syndrome negative t waves in right precordial leads and epsilon wave when there is family history of sudden death a syncope in an older age group or when there is severe structural heart or coronary artery disease prognosis prediction also uses san francisco syncope rule called braces brain natriuretic peptide more than 300 picogram per ml bradycardia of less than 50 beats per minute rectal examination with positive fecal occult blood test anemia of hemoglobin less than 9 grams per deciliter chest pain with syncope ecg with q waves and oxygen saturation less than 94% on room air patients are considered high risk if any of the seven criteria are present for low risk patients op evaluation is adequate patients are considered of low risk if age less than 50 years there is no history of cardiovascular disease normal ecg symptoms consistent with vasovagal or orthostatic syncope and there is normal cardiovascular system 
a useful flow chart for diagnostic approach to syncope in middle aged and older adults when patient presents with syncope obtain history perform physical examination and an ecg when it when this is diagnostic for orthostatic hypotension or neurally mediated syncope evaluation is complete when it is an unexplained syncope perform echocardiogram graded exercise test and ischemia evaluation when this is abnormal treat the structural heart disease and ischemia for arrhythmia evaluation consider electrophysiologic testing if patient has a history of myocardial infarction consider implantable cardioverter defibrillator if left ventricular ejection fraction is less than 30% with or without history of myocardial infarction when echo graded exercise test and ischemia evaluation is normal and the syncope is single and benign episode evaluation is complete if a syncope has frequent episodes correlate symptoms with rhythm holter or event monitor or implantable loop recorder as appropriate when the syncopal episodes is infrequent insert implantable loop recorder sinus rhythm with symptoms cardiac evaluation complete when arrhythmias with symptoms treat as appropriate in conclusion syncope when correctly diagnosed and appropriately investigated can lead one to something as simple as a vasovagal attack or to a very serious life threatening arrhythmia both of this can be rewarding to the clinician as well as the patient thank you